Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Star Ladder Star Hi, Series Season back. 9 group stages for Europe. It is, of course, the retry up against Insane Gaming here in a best of one series. We've got two more games, this one included, Brilliant coming fewer this evening, of course. This one, and of course, later on, Power Rangers vs. Uh, Insane Gaming as well. So, thank you so much for joining me here. My name is Maude. And honestly, these two teams had a bit of a disappointing time here in Star Ladder. Insane Gaming, they're 0 and 11. The retry, they have just one win to their name right now, trying to look for a second here. Insane Gaming, they're just trying to get on the board at this point in time, trying to get at least one victory, trying to avoid utter embarrassment at this point in time. We'll see what they can accomplish here moving forward. But the retry, their victory comes against, I believe, next KZ. Whereas for Insane, they they have not picked up a victory yet. So this this is an opportunity for them. They only have four more games, including this one, to go and. You know, at this point in time, they're they're down at the bottom of the barrel here for the league standings as of right now. You look at the top, Cloud9 is, of course, you know, right up there with 8-2. and two, They're third place right now. Seconds, Alliance, they're already done with all of their games. They're 11-4. and four. Team Empire at 10-1. and one. They're looking Five real strong. Seconds, Virtus Pro 8-3 after their victory against Sigma yesterday. So they're 7-4 and four, and Fnatic are 7-3. and three. So that's kind of the Dieting. top of the charts there. Navi still have a lot of games to go. But Radiant this time team. around, this is just for pride. This one just to make sure Insane and Retry have a good game Dieting. here. Insane have come fairly close to a couple of victories here and there. Whether it's in Star Ladder or whether it's in Tech Labs Cup or something along those lines. The Retry, they're a strong team as well. They go for some unorthodox drafts. Both teams kind of go for something a little bit out of the ordinary from time to time. But we we should see who's going to be going for the victory here. Centaur Warrunner picked up for the retry, whereas Batrider and Nanga Siren for Insane Gaming as well. So they have that lockdown with the Batrider. They have Insane for the Nanga Siren. They have Song of the Siren as well. Seconds. If they want to use that as a support, they certainly can. I've seen them do it before. But Dying they can also use it as that mid hero or that solo safe land farmer. Not even solo, just safe land farmer, just to make sure he gets up to a ratings real early on. We'll see if that happens. Ancient Apparition for the retry. Radiant so team <clears throat> these four heroes are like the some of the strongest heroes in the game right now and and the top four bands as well similarly are pretty much up there you know the invoker the lichen invoker hasn't gotten through in like a long time i Dyer feel like team yesterday Dyer. sing sing picked it up i believe for c9 up against in, insane but uh you're not gonna see that too often that hero is just too damn good at this point in time quas exhort and quaswix there's multiple ways you can go with that hero now which is actually pretty exciting that he has that capability, but remaining. with a bat rider, he's going to be in the offlane here for insane gaming, trying to get to that Five at least level six remaining. early on. Go to the jungle, get a couple Radiant of jungle stacks back. and creep camps, and get close to that blink dagger as quickly as possible. And something that's also interesting to note is that he's not the only hero that can kind of just abuse jungle stacks. Sand King has seen a rise to prominence because of his sandstorm and his ability to, jung to jungle farm. And, and even the most basic of Dota players can actually accomplish it and get a very quick blink dagger. Five All you need to do is stack up some hard camps, sit in Sandstorm, hope you don't get roamed on, and even if you do, it shouldn't affect you that badly. So you'll have a very quick blink dagger. You won't be able to be effective in the early stages of the game, but it's better just to have that blink dagger ready for your epicenter. Because guess what? You don't even need to go for your arcane boots anymore. Because blink dagger has no mana cost at this point. We may very well see him in this game. Nice. They're going to go for the Lifestealer, however. A hero that's Dire sort of okay pick. still. A strong carry nonetheless. It's tough to lock him down in the Centaur. That's going to be a tough matchup for him. Lifestealer should be okay in that matchup. Because Centaur, you look, he's got all these magical abilities here. Not even double edge is, is physical. but So Lifestealer should be just fine in that scenario. Ancient Apparition. Well... Same thing there. Obviously, though, I believe the Ice Blast goes through Magic Immunity. It is Magical Damage, but I'm pretty sure it goes through Magical Immunity. I may be wrong about that. Five seconds remaining. So for the retry, they'll pick up another hero here. They already have the Centaur in the offlane. They can send it into the safe lane and kind of have him as a farming Centaur. They're going to go for the Shadow Shaman as well, so they have a bit of uh, early game potential here. Shadow Shaman, once he hits level 6, gets those Serpent Wards up, he can start pushing and team fighting with the Centaur as well. You don't want to fight into Centaur's Stampede or the Serpent Wards. That's just too much damage to deal with, so Insane have to be careful of that. They do have the Venomancer, so they'll be able to catch out the Centaur pretty easily with Open Wounds and Venom Scale. The problem is with the Centaur, he is tanky, but he's got no real Radiant escape mechanism early on. Yes, he does have Stampede, but that's only when he's level 6. So, if it's a defensive trial lane and Centaur is going to be in that off lane, Insane Gaming should be able to punish him pretty well. But now the retry pick up a Slark here as well, which could be the off lane hero and Centaur could be the farming hero, or vice versa. You could even send a Slark mid, depending on who's going to lane there for Insane Gaming. They might do that, but that's, that's a bit questionable, I think, so... 
We'll see how it goes. The Sand King is going to get banned from the retry Radiant just to make sure that pick. that's not available. The re re retry, as it were. One more pick to go for both sides. A pretty quick draft. Not going to complain about that, though. Anytime we can get through the draft into the game, I'm pretty excited. And there's no point in sticking around and using all of your reserve time for a draft that you kind of know what the top two heroes are to ban out. I mean, you look at their bonus time right now, 134 for Insane Gaming. Mean, they have a lot of time Ten to think about this last remaining. pick. If they really want to, the retry, they've got 147. They've only used three seconds of the reserve time. So the retry, they know what they want. And this is actually, this is kind of, you know... This is how the retry plays the draft. They Seven generally time. don't take too long to pick their heroes. They know what they want, and they'll take it when they can get it. PGG, pretty good drafter in his own right. We see some enigma from him from time to time, but probably not this game. Not with the Shadow Shaman, not with the Ancient Apparition in here. So, sadly, we won't see him. And it's actually surprising. I feel like enigma with the Black Hole buff is a bit better. We've seen him a couple of times, but not nearly enough in my opinion, so... Dire team pick. Shadow Demon is going to come through right now for Insane Gaming. They can start things off with the Disruption into a Soul Catcher, Venomous Gale right afterwards, Open Wounds to finish things off as well. That's just too much damage to deal with. Soul Catcher is just so nice to have. And he's one of the reasons why Shadow Demon has been picked competitively for a couple of years now. He's just been at kind of... He's seen kind of a falling off, but there are many, many times where he's kind of that old standby in terms of supports. Remaining. He's so good in de a defensive situation, it's just really nice. PGG picks up the Kunkka for himself, though, to run it all out. That might be their mid-hero. We'll see how it goes. As we do jump into the first game, well, my first game of the evening. And yes, I will not forget the overlay. I'm so sorry about that yesterday. I can't apologize enough. Profusely, even. Profuse apologies, so. We are going to jump into the game. The Retry versus Insane. Insane has a game against Power Rangers coming up next as well. Power Rangers not doing too well. They they were maybe figured to be the underdogs, but they're four and five right now. So unless they can go on and tear and win every single game, I don't think they have a chance to get to the playoffs. Sadly, so we'll see how it goes. We jump into the game once again. My name is Mon. Here on the Starlight stream. Prepare for battle. That is the Grillhound, isn't it? Yeah, that's nice. I love that courier. It's so neat. So on the side of Retro, we've got Nubik on the Shadow Shaman. Arrow Arrow will be on a Slark. The top lane with Android on the Ancient Apparition. Mid is going to be PGG on the Kunkka. Down bottom, it's going to be Screen rounding out the Retries lineup. On the other side of things, Inquisitor. He's going to be on the Life Stealer. We'll see Tron on the Venomancer. Big Num is going to be on the Shadow Demon. In the mid lane, Show Me on the Nagasar in mid. Top lane, Judo playing the Bat Rider. So the problem here is... This is not the best matchup for Naga. She doesn't have too many favorable matchups early on in the game. And certainly PGG going Tideburger could absolutely wreck this Naga Siren. So expect to see some roams come out from Insane just to help out. They have a good roaming duo. Big Nom on the Shadow Demon being one of them. Tron on the Venomancer being the other. It is going to be defensive trial lanes for both sides here. Wards are going to be coming up from Big Num here in just a second. In the top lane, they're going to have the Slark safe lane farm here with Nubik and Android. They're going to be up against the Bat Rider. He did go for boots first, so he should be okay. He'll put a ward down somewhere around here. It might get countered, but as for right now, he should be fine in terms of getting last hits and, and being able to get at least some experience. He might get zoned out. They do have Chilling Touch. They do have Rasta, who of course can use Shackles and Hex. And Slark can pounce up and try to leech. That Bat Rider, double damage coming up from Slark. His landing experience is it's pretty good right now. Show me with the Riptide early on here. No surprise there. Poor main shield to start double things off as well, damage. interestingly enough. Some people like to build into a Ring of Aquila real quick. Get a Quelling Blade as well early on. Get, And that's kind of what you need is an Aquila, Bottle, Quelling Blade. You're good to go. So... Show me. Continuing to get farm right now. PGG, only level 1 Tidebringer, not doing that much damage, obviously, plus the poor man's shield being somewhat useful here. But PGG, once he gets up a couple levels in Tidebringer, this is going to be a disturbing amount of damage, so that's something that you do have to keep in mind. PGG is going to back off right now, taking a bit of harass damage. Already four last hits for Chomi on that Naga Siren. If he can keep that farm up, though, he'll be in a really good position to take this late game. Slark with double damage, he's sitting on three last hits. He's getting a pull coming through from Nubik, no surprise there. Down bottom, Tron trying to zone out screen. He's not going to get too far forward here. Nice Observer Ward placement coming out from the retries. Offlander, they can Sentry Ward that, but 
Venomancer has it. He hasn't placed it down. He'll generally place the sentry here, and that might be in range. It may not be, however, so we'll see. Show me taking right click damage and uh, tower damage as well. Actually, getting kind of low. He still only has one tango. He bought that poor man's shield. No bottle just yet for him, so he has to actually wait a bit of time there. Seven last hits coming out from Inquisitor down in this bottom lane. And this, I feel like this hero fits his playstyle rather well. He's a, a kind of aggressive player in terms of what he can accomplish. So Inquisitor will see if he can get some last hits and take this into the mid to late game here. Kind of snowball out of control with a Lifestealer. He doesn't want to last hit under the tower. He's going to try to pull the creep wave back real quick. Just tank it up a bit. He does have some tango, so no harm done there. He'll be fine. He doesn't want to last hit under the tower. No surprise. PGG not outright winning this lane right now. And... Not a huge surprise, but he should be doing a bit better. I feel like he's only got seven last hits compared to the 11 that Chomi has. And all of a sudden, a roam coming through. Judo getting caught out of position. Sticky napalm. Chilling touch is going to go. There are the shackles. Cold feet as well. Nice time. This should be first blood. And the torrent. PGG picks it up. Now, Chomi trying to mirror image. He's going to chase out for PGG, but he can't really get much done here. So, Just a nice... You saw... The cold feet and the shackles go right at the same time. That's just good communication and a good team play in general. The retry, grabbing that first blood. Chomi kind of just has to look on and see that Batrider go down. And that's unfortunate because he might have been close to his tranquils at some point. But loses that gold. So down bottom. Screen open. Wounded Venom skill as well. I'm sure he's about to fall. Inquisitor gets the kill with the right click. So already one to one the score here. Insane at least gets something on the board here. First Blood did go for the Kunkka, which is huge for PGG, my view. However, Centaur does go down. So that's what I was talking about in terms of getting kills in that bottom lane. They're, they're being pretty aggressive, and that was without... That was without one of the heroes. That was without Bignum. Bignum's just been pulling consistently, trying to get some sort of experience, and that's no surprise there. Level 3 for Tron. Now laning experience is going to go for Bignum, so they're going to just try to you know switch on and off. See who can get the experience in terms of the supports. No roams coming through to try to take down this Kunkka. They don't, I don't think they have a smoke on Big Nem or on the Venomancer, which is something that's interesting because they have such a good roaming core. Top lane, Shackles, Cold Feet going as well. Judo in trouble. The Pounce came as well. Nice kill coming out the Shadow Shaman, getting the last hit there. That Rider falls once again. He's having a rough time. He may need to go to the jungle now. I don't expect him to go back to that top lane. Chomi with the Quelling Blade, the Poor Man Shield as well. PGG continuing to farm away. Sitting at 15 last hits. Actually, not too far away from the Naga right now. So he's getting back into it. Level 3 Tidebringer. And Chomi actually has to be very careful. You can see him. He's pretty much at full health. But he doesn't want to take a hit from PGG. He'll wait till the lane gets pushed in. He'll last hit under the tower. He'll go from there. That's one thing you do have to keep in mind. Is that Kunkka's going to push in the wave real quick with Tidebringer. And that means that it's going to be under the tower. So that you can see Chomi last hitting. Whether it's in the jungle or with his illusions mid. He'll get some last hits here. Which actually gives him a lot of farm. He's sitting right now on 500 gold. Not too bad. We'll see if he goes for an Aquila or something along those lines. Screen within this room. He should be okay. Big Num and Tron. They're sitting right around this area. But, they, you know, he's not going to go for a killer, I don't think. He does have double edge level 2, level 1 stomp. But that's not enough to get a solo kill, I think, at this point in the game. It'd be pretty kind of suicidal, I think, against these two heroes anyways. If Tron puts a Sentry Ward down, my goodness, how, how great would that be? That would just be spectacular play. But, sadly, that's not the case, so... Top lane is going really well for the Slark right now. He's sitting on 24 last hits. Going for a Wraith Band. Ring of Aquila is going to be the choice for the Slark here. It's been buffed, so a lot of people used to forego that item. Now a lot of people pick it up. It's pretty good. Big change to it. Judo, he is staying in this top lane. Like I said, he could go to that jungle, but they're more intent on having the Nagasaru farm it than the Batrider. Now... Pounces up. Judo might get solo killed here. Essence shift. Not enough damage. Dark Pact already went. Judo has to back off. No dive coming out from the Slark player. That would have been questionable at best. But almost getting the kill. Judo has to go back home. This is maybe the roughest Batrider land we've seen in a while. It's very unfortunate. Bottle now getting Crow to Chomi here. I'm just going to continue to Bottle Crow. Riptide maybe. Just to take this down real quick with Mirror Images. So two points Mirror Image. Two, three points into the uh, Riptide. No Ensnare coming out. Just trying to RR it. And get some farm here. Android and Nubik, they're going to smoke it to Seek and try to find Chomi. He has no level 6. He just Radiant skilled it up now. Tower. No mana Radiant for it, though. They're backing off. Oh, if they stayed there, they could have gotten the kill. Even with Naga Siren grabbing level 6, there's still no Song of the Siren because there is no mana. So they'll head up top. They're not going to find anything there. Batrider has gone to the jungle. He'll stack it up a bit. Maybe even use a Firefly with the Sneaky Napalm Strikes as well. Big Dumb down in the bottom lane with Inquisitor. He's sitting on his uh, phase boots and an Orb of Venom as well. 
just trying to get some extra right-click damage going, some extra chase potential as well. Scream, what's he sitting at? Level 4? So, in terms of offlanders, he's not doing too badly. Batrider actually has more experience here. And now he's going to get more farm as well because he'll regen up, go to the, the creep stack here that he's got. Take that real quick with Firefly, maybe even take this stack as well, which is not a mud bulb stack, thank God. But, we'll see how it goes. Chomi now, backing off. Ring of Basilius done for Chomi. Level 6 for the Nagasar and PGG. Pushing this in. He's setting on 34 last hits. They're actually even in last hits, but 6 denies coming up for PGG, so that's the difference. His phase boots are done. Torrent's gonna go. He'll take down the Illusion real quick as well, just to make sure he can't continue to farm with it. A very passive game thus far. There's been a couple of kills here and there, but nothing too crazy. We'll wait and see who gets the first big item, and that should be where the team fight starts. Inquisitor. Considering he's on this kind of snowballing hero and kind of an early to mid game hero, we'll see him probably involved in a bit of team fights once maybe he gets his armlet or whatever item he decides to pick up first. He's got 47 last hits at 7 minutes in, so Inquisitor is. He's a rising master at this point, in terms of this game anyway. Torn's gonna fly through Chomi, gonna walk into it. No, just misses. That would have been an aggressive play from PGG, but knowing him, that's not a big surprise. Look at this, he's tanking the tower. He hits the creep with his Tidebringer. He wants to use the cooldown. He wants to get as much tower damage done here. Show me, he's got no room, really. Mirror Image is going to come through. He's got a Bottle Crow once again. Ring of Aquila is done, so he gets that bit of uh, agility, a bit of armor as well. The Bottle as well back up to him. Tranquil Boots finally done for screen. What about the Batrider? What is Judo accomplishing? Not that much. He's level 5. Centaur is sitting right now on level 5 as well. He's going to get Ghana, though. Disruption going to fly through. Soul Catcher just misses. It's on a range creep right now. Open Wounds is going to fly. There's the range as well. Screen is locked in. The Illusions locked him in. And the Creep Wave, you've got to be kidding me. The Illusions and the Creep Wave just functioning as a mini trap. They get the kill even without Soul Catcher. Only with two heroes. Screen's dying twice in this game. Drums are already done for the Lifestealer at 8 minutes and 10 seconds because of those two kills. He's in a good position now to carry this into the mid stages of the game. PGG working on Judo, the right click coming through. Android thinking about farming here or fighting. Nubik, he's got shackles, but. Oh, Judo's stuck in the high ground for a second. When he's, he's got he's got his Firefly still going, so he's fine. All the meanwhile, Chomi's still farming away, trying to get to that relic. 500 gold, and yeah, I mean, this is at this point, he should be going for the relic next. Torn just missing. Hex is up. Shackles might come through. No, just a bit too far. Song of the Siren coming through the boat as well. They have that run going right now, but they want to fight anyways. Android has chilling touch. And they might be okay, but Tron is here looking for a Venom Scale. Gonna hit on two. Immediately AA going down. Nubik following closely behind. PGG in trouble. Soul Catcher, even with that run, it doesn't matter. That is a double kill for Chomi. And now sitting on 1,180 gold, he'll work on this Tyrone Tower as well and try to get even closer to that relic. All the meanwhile, screen getting dove by Inquisitor. He is on a killing spree right now. There is a creep wave blocking him in. No, Inquisitor, get out of there. He phases away. Nice play there. Nubic TP's in Aether Shocks as well. Shackle's ready. Hex is ready, but he's not in range. He'll back off. 60 last hits. 27 denies for your Inquisitor. He's really one of the only people I feel like I'm insane that's doing a lot of work here. I mean, obviously Chomi as well, but the retry, they might give up their defeat here to the first victory of Insane right now. And Insane are looking okay. They've got a lead. They, they have the Naga Siren as well to fall back on if the Lifestealer doesn't get too much done. And this is great. We talk so much about semi-carries in the safe lane now and sort of your harder carries in the mid lane. And this is one of those examples. Sometimes you'll see a Slaughter, sometimes you'll see somebody that just gives you more room in the safe lane. Somebody that not, that's not necessarily a super hard carry. Whereas in the mid lane, your Shadow Fiends, your Naga Sirens, your what have you, are going to be the ones farming up and carrying into the late game. And this is that exact kind of thing. Inquisitor, he knows he's not going to take this super late if it goes that way. But once Insane's Chomi gets up that ratings, once he starts farming like crazy, and once he starts dealing damage, maybe three or four, four slotted with the Naga Siren, they can be in an okay position to take this to the late game. Whereas if you look at the retry, this Slark, yes, he's farming well, but is he really going to carry this? Taking a lot of damage coming through. Cold Feet as well from Android, just to make sure Judo doesn't go for the kill. He has that last one, no Blink Tagger, but he's getting close to it, at least 1,300 gold in the bank. Down bottom, Nubik getting chased down. Soul Catcher flying through, no Demonic Purge is available. Nubik trying to juke away. Open Woods, they don't want to use the Purge right now. Nice, Hex up on Coincidor, but it's not going to do enough there. There's a dominant extreme for the Life Stealer right now, and Ownage as well. Insane have a, a pretty decent lead right now with 2,000 gold at 10 minutes in, and 2,000 plus experience at this point, so. They're looking okay. Net worth is being led by the Lifestealer. Once this Naga picks up a Relic, 
Maybe she'll get up there as well, but she's still pretty far away from it. 11 minutes in. Top lane, though. They will grab the Batrider. Getting low is the Slark. He'll back away right now, sitting in 1,800 gold. His item choice, not sure. All the meanwhile, Inquisitor continues to farm. Screen, what level is he? Level 5 Radiant's still. Top not even level 6 for the attack. Centaur Warrunner. With an interesting set. What the hell is this helm? Helmet of Omex. He's getting dope, however. Demonic Purge, Venomous Gale, Inquisitor, Open Wounds, Rage is going to fly, stomp, can't use that. Taking a lot of damage. One more hit will do the job. He tried to stomp Inquisitor, though. Level 4 Rage. Demonic, already used. Nice Infest. Infest out as well, Inquisitor. His Open Wounds not available. He'll back away right now. Roaming through as well was PGG to try to help out, but nothing going on there. So no real big fights just yet, except for the one that kind of happened mid. A lot of wards coming out from the Dire team. PGG, Torrent, he does hit this one, but no follow-up coming through. Nice Tidebringer damage. He could have boated. PGG going for that top rune spot. He's going to find it. Nice X marks coming through. Chomi, Song of the Siren. He really wants that DD. He pops the song just for it. He'll pick it up. Maybe try to fight on PGG. Maybe not. He doesn't have Ensnare, so there's no real way he could chase him down. And it would only be level 1 at that fact, so only 2 second duration as well. Sitting at 2600 gold, Song now down for 160 seconds, so Chomi has gonna, he's gonna play a bit passively until that Song's back up, I'd imagine. TP coming through from Inquisitor, he's back in it, going for an SNY. Inquisitor about to have that, just a Yasha away from that. That's about 2100 gold, obviously, so getting close. Nice play coming out from Insane, carry down in that bottom lane. Judo getting ever so close to... That Blink Dagger, he's going to forego the Tranquil Boots just to get that Blink. Tranquil is not necessary if he's not farming the jungle, I suppose. As long as he's not dying anymore. He's sitting at level 8 right now. Centaur is sitting at level 5, so... Yeah, Insane are having a much better time. Even though Judo died 3 times, Centaur, he's died 4. And it, it seemed like Screen was having an okay time, but then he just kind of amplified his deaths to another magnitude. He'll try to get to a Blink Dagger of his own, but that's going to be a while away from him. Top lane, Slar catching out Judo right now. Lasso's gonna go up just to make sure he doesn't go down. Ice Blast flying through, Judo's gonna walk into it. Boom! AA gets the kill with that ultimate. Nice play there, the Pounce. The Lasso was trying to do what it could, but the Pounce came through, Leash was up, and that poor Bat Rider goes down once again. He did buy Boots of Travel. He bought right before he died, and oh my, he, he bought bots instead of a Blink Dagger. He was so very close. He was so close. At least he'll be speedy enough to be somewhat useful in these fights. And, and really, that's the only problem for Insane right now, is that Judo has nothing. Bots is going to be great, but you prefer to have that Blink Dagger 99 out of 100 times. So, Mid lane, show me taking a Torrent real quick. He's 3,300 gold. Maybe a 15, 16 minute Radiance, or Relic, excuse me, coming through. The, the Radiance will be done at about 17 or 18. Tron trying to get back into this with, of course, some nice uh, Ancient Stack pulling through. The Plague Ward's doing a lot of work here. Down bottom. Wards are up. Shackles going. Stomp on Inquisitor. Can they get this kill? He's got Rachel infested a creep. Infest out. Open wounds available. Running at him. Screen in trouble here. He's got to back off. He can't go for the kill. TP coming through. Tower flies down. Pounce. Latches. Double kill. Slark gets one top. Comes bottom immediately and grabs another one. The retry are back in it after a couple of kills here. They do lose their towers. That one bottom is going to go down. But they did take the one top here as well. I'm not sure if that got denied or if they took it. Not sure. Relic is done for Chomi, however. It still is a 2,000 gold lead coming up from Insane. The experience lead is 1,000 in favor of the retry, so not that bad. But that's actually surprising considering where the Centaur is at. The real difference is the Sark, who's at level 12 right now. So PGG, Shadow Blade now done. Maybe into a Daedalus next. Try to get some damage going through. Try to be as aggressive early on as possible. Against Inquisitor, that's going to be an issue. We've talked about what he can accomplish here. His Blade of Alacrity already done. Just needs a couple more hundred gold to get to that SMY, and then he's really going to start going to town. Judo backing off Lasso. Torrent just missing on Judo, getting away with that Firefly. He's getting X marks, cold feet as well. In some trouble, not going to latch up. Nice disruption to get away from that. Screen looking to stop, misses. Song of the Sire coming through as well. The Venom Scale mistimed there. Chomi's ready to fight, still no Radiance. Inquisitor is making his way, but still getting there slowly. PGG, got to push this back. No fighting engaging just yet. But the Pounce, try and get it caught out. Dark Pact as well. Slark will pick up a kill. He's dominating right now. Inquisitor is ready to fight, but they're missing their Venomancer. And their Bat Rider is extremely low. He has to head back. The retry are being aggressive now and insane. They had a lead, but they 
aren't really getting enough farm to kind of counteract the aggressions that are coming out from the retry here, so. Top lane. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. They're gonna run through. They're gonna five man this tier one. Okay, I don't know if that was necessary. Radiance They're gonna afford it. I guess it was. Infest is up in a Nagasaur and Illusion. Open was new, but get trouble. Stampede nicely done. Boat's gonna go through as well. This is gonna be a tough fight for the Radiant team. Ice Blast Tron about to fall to the Slark and will. Only hits on Begnum right now. Stop is up. He is done. Two down immediately. The retryer turning this around. Chomi getting chased down. Pounces up. Flame break pushing him forward. Pounce misses. Dark Pact as well. Chomi, no song of the side. Iron, taking a lot of right click, pounce up in three seconds, blink forward, blink is on a Slark, double kill for him, getting open wounded, pounce out of the high ground, Slark is doing work right now, they're gonna back off, they take the tier one tower, they take the team fight, all the while, Nubik getting home, nice plays coming out from the retry, and I don't know, insane, 17 minute radiance up on Chomi right now, he's gotta focus on farming unless I'm fighting here. Slark is now backing off. The ultimate orb is up. The blink dagger is up. Everything is ready to go. He'll blink up onto the high ground. Dark pact flying through as well. And and maybe a Scotty coming up for the Slark here. You always have to keep in mind that whenever there's a Bat Rider or somebody along those lines like a Doom, maybe you can go for a link it's when you have an ultimate orb. Mantis style probably not happening. So it should maybe be a Scotty. I'm not 100% sure about it. But that seems to be the best case scenario for the Slark here. He needs a second one, obviously, and we'll find out soon if he buys another ultimate orb after he's got 2100 gold now. The point booster as well is important to have. Yep, it is going to be that Scotty early on for Slark. So, early, early Scotty coming out from the Slark. His damage is going to get out of control. His lockdown potential just going to be so nice to have. Almost 10k in net worth right now. The Naga Siren not even close, although he has the Radiance. And Snares up on Android. This is not good. TP's coming through the cold feed as well. PGG, X Marks coming through. Song of the Siren. Torrent misses. Chomi does avoid it. Make some illusions as well. Back off. Put him on the tower, maybe. Stampede. No Blink Dagger, though, for the uh, Centaur. Still cannot chase this. Had he had a Blink Dagger, he'd be okay, but Blink forward. Slark misses the pounce. He is pretty quick. Especially when he's got his Shadow Dance. Nagasaren grabs the kill on Nubik, though, with his illusions. That's sad. Demonic Purge on screen. This is not the best try, uh, fight for the retry right now. Boat coming through, however. Blink Dagger forward. Slark going to town. Gets one on Big Num. The Ice Blast coming through. Hitting on two. Tron is about to fall. He will. Double kill for PGG. Looking for Chomi. No song. Screen getting low. Stomp is up. He might fall. PGG getting low as well. He's going to take a right click. Double kill coming out for Chomi. Four down for both sides. The last two might man fight. No. Mill back away. Jesus. Some fights happening right now. Nubit going down to the Naga Siren Illusions. This, this is actually starting to get kind of annoying. So Naga picked up. Two kills there, 1,700 gold in the bank. She did die in the end, but that's not too bad considering what happened there. So the boat came through. I think actually the, that was the wrong wearing off for Kunkka and then why he went down so quickly. I might be wrong about that. He does pick up a Chrysalis. Scotty now done for the Slark. A disgusting amount of damage. Inquisitor getting caught out. Shackles, Ice Blast, the right clicks. No infest, ready to go. I mean, it was, but he wasn't going to get into a creep anytime soon. Shadow Shaman getting the kill there. Centaur War Warner still 1,000 gold away from that Blink Dagger. They have Serpent Wars to go for this Roche right now. They'll use them probably in just a minute. There they go. Roshan about to fall very quickly here. No way that Insane can contest this. And they're still looking for their first victory. And they had such a good start as well. They had a lead by about eight kills, and they still can't get anything done. You see new big Android, everybody kind of roaming through here towards Roshan from the retry. Up in that top lane, Big Num just trying to push this out. Looking for maybe a tier one tower, but still already Slark grabbing the ages. He's got a Scotty at 20 minutes in. Blink Dagger 
He's got a Shadow Dance at level 3. He's level 18. It's a level 18 Slark. He's five levels ahead of the Nagasard. That's disgusting. How is that possible? He's looking for more. Judo's trying to Firefly away. There's the Stampede. Pounces up. Nice blink away, but will it save his life? Flame Break pushing him back. Stomp misses. Slark might die. This tower Hex is up. Judo getting blinked on. Boom, he's dead. Torn comes through a bit late. PGG getting the kill. The retry now asserting their dominance, forcing their will onto Insane. With multiple team fights. Aegis is up. Jeez. My goodness. Radiance bottom Retry had a 2,000 gold lead. Guess what? Now it's even. Dyer's experience lead. They had a 2,500 experience lead. Guess what? 7,500 experience lead. So. Goodness gracious me. Dyer's structures are fortified. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Down bottom, Android working on an Ogre Club. That's that's probably not going to be a BKB. That's probably going to be an Aghanim Scepter. But I've seen Stranger Things before, so I don't know. We'll wait and see if that's actually the case. It, and 21 minutes in, and I gotta say, this is just looking real bad for Insane. But the thing is, there's an Agasaren. I don't know how many times I've said that in the past couple of days. There's an Agasar, and don't worry. Whether that's just me in a pub game, whether that's just obviously, you know, in a cast, it's it's been said pretty often. Naga can carry this hard, but Chomi's doing more fighting than farming. And that's something that you shouldn't be doing. He should be leading the CS chart. He is, but not by much. He should have much, much more. Gonna get hit up with the Ice Blast. Song of the Siren is gonna go. He'll get X marks back. Missed a bit there, PGG, a little early on the torrent right now. Everyone looking to fight here. Blink forward from Nubik, Stampede's gonna fly. Everyone getting back from Insane, they don't want to fight. That's a smart move. Pop the song, get back, don't do anything too crazy. The Slark is going to absolutely just destroy you, so please don't fight against him. He's got 12,000 net worth, he's level 18, he's almost level 19. Level 3 Shadow Dance is no joke, by the way. That regen is so damn good. Radiance middle tower and the move speed as well is pretty nice. Serpent Wards are up the tier 2 tower, getting forced down, maybe even sieged here to a certain extent. PGG has double damage rune. He almost has his Daedalus. He'll have enough for the Demon Edge right now. Just needs the uh, recipe on top of all that. Inquisitor trying to get to a Basher at this point, but they've lost their early game advantage. Radiance X Marks is going up an Illusion. They'll take it down real quick, but the Illusion doing a bit of damage will have to back off now. A little bit too low. No mech on any of the heroes here for the retry, it looks like. Android's going to that Aghanim Scepter, and Nubik picked up a uh, Ghost Scepter on top of his Blink Dagger, Blink Dagger that he already has. So, three minute cooldown or three minute duration left here, I should say, for the Aegis right now. And They'll probably try to take one more tower down. There still are two Tier 2s left, ready to go. None of them have taken damage here. But they know they have to be aggressive. Screen now has his Blink Dagger, and this is where it gets real sketchy for Insane. Judo has his Blink, he's got his Boots of Travel as well, but he's not really used his lasso this entire game. The only times he's used it is when he's in a bad situation and about to die. He'll try to go for that four Staff next, and he's getting close to it, but he still needs the recipe in the Ring of Health. Ring of Regen, excuse me. I get those two confused all the time, I don't know why. Oh, but that's out playing, continue to push in here. Android, 800 gold in the bank. Nothing on the courier right now for them. Item wise, Shadow Demon hasn't accomplished that much as well. Disruptions haven't been used super defensively. He's died very quickly in the fights. He only has two deaths though, so not too bad. Eight assists, so I guess he's done something. I just have missed it, it seems like. And it's going to be an Agnum Scepter for the Venomancer when he can get there. It's going to take a bit of time, obviously. He needs three more components. He's got enough money for one of them, but still. 2,000 gold left for that. And when he gets it, yeah, that'll be great, but it's only level 1 right now, so he's got to get to level 11. Level 2 ultimate's pretty nice. The Radiant's damage with it at level 2, 81 with Scepter. Thought I heard Stampede go for a second, but I guess I'm just hearing things. And actually, the retry, they're going to go for the mech on Centaur. And we've seen this before. Once you get your Blink Dagger, you can either pick up a Piper or a mech. Depends on what you have to deal with in this game. Considering there's only Radiance, Riptide, and Venomancer, yeah, either would be nice, but they want to go for the mech. Basher now done for Inquisitor. 
And they're going to look to maybe force something top. There's no tier one tower here. It was taken down a little bit ago. But PGG Radiant's now with the Daedalus. They need to be attack. aggressive. Age is gone in one minute. They know this. They're going to try to go to the bottom jungle and find somebody out here. Tron's the only one available. But he's behind this tier one tower. He's got a little bit of a ward army here as well. That's actually the ward army. They could try to wrap on him. Whether this way or back through this way. Doesn't seem to be the case, though. They're going to just go Radiant's straight for the tier 2 tower. tower. Root Child might even go for high ground at some point. But while this is happening, Inquisitor's pushing in this top tier 2. They might even try to Dyer's defend that. The Serpent Lords are going to do a lot of work. TP going into the tier 3 top Radiant's tier 2 minutes. Well, fortifications are available. No. It's on cooldown for 22 seconds. Rage is up. Inquisitor trying to TP away. Radiant's PGG going to come through. It was going to maybe X mark, but that's not going to work. So they get a tier 2 tower. They defend their tier 2 tower top. Nice try from Insane just to try to split push while that's all happening. Still, Naga Siren sitting on 3,500 gold. Another item going to come soon, whether that's the Heart of Trask, whether that's a Mance Style, whether that's a Diffuse Blade. There's a whole lot of options. We'll have a pause real quick here as Big Dumb disconnects. And what would CIS Dota be without a couple of pauses and a couple of disconnects? Because I'll tell you what, guys. I will tell you what. Watching Tech Labs Cup, that's one thing I've understood. There's a lot of disconnects. So... Don't unpause this PGG. Looks like you might have to use the restroom. Maybe something along those lines. 12 to 16 the score. In terms of graphs, 2,000 gold lead for the retry right now. Experience lead 10,000. That's a lot. Level 20 Slark at 26 minutes in. I don't know where he's getting all this experience from, but it might be the fact that he's 806 and he's got how much CS? 176. So yeah. 594 GPM. Another team fight going his way. He'll be above 600 for sure. Without a Midas, that's pretty outstanding. Uh, good stuff thus far. Just really good. Just really good. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me. My name is Mont. The BTS guys, Ziori gods, LD, all of them. All of them. Getting ready to work on Starlight or North American playoffs, I believe, between, I think it's EG and Liquid. That'll be a lot of fun to watch. I'm really looking forward to that game. Um, just two of my favorite teams going against each other. I'm really a big fan of EG and how they play right now. I think it's outstanding. I've known Arteezy for a while. Uh, I started casting him when he played for Gratz, though, back before everyone knew him as a household name. I'm a hipster in that way. I gave him I gave him his big start. I gave him the the lights to become a star. And then he flamed me in JDL. I think he like told me to fuck off or something or called me a fuckhead in the JDL and all chat. I have to I have to it was it was E Hug versus E G. If anybody has a JDL ticket and can go back and confirm that. I know that's a lot of work, but I cast in one of those games, so and I have a story about RTZ as well, actually. Um, I tell the story a lot. I don't know. It's not even that funny of a story, but it is for me, I guess. So at MLG Columbus, I had the pleasure of meeting him for the first time in person, and, and I talked with him a bit, and we were talking. And um, this was right after – it was before the playoffs. Cloud9 – or not Cloud9, I suppose. Uh, God, a speed gaming, I suppose, is what they were called then. Um, they needed a victory to get into the playoffs against DK. If they got a victory, they would secure – a playoff spot in the last game of the evening team liquid versus fanatic was on stage but most of the people were watching um speed versus dk everyone's kind of around their computers because you play kind of out in the open at mlg columbus they have the stage obviously but then all the other computers are in this kind of open area and everyone's watching you it's kind of weird in a voyeuristic way and so Ortiz, he's just sitting there and he, he gets up and like they won their game and he's just so happy you could see just how happy he was with his team just smiling and I go up and I talk to him and just like, we're talking. And I think Charlie's there as well, Monolith, obviously. And I was talking with Spetwad as well. And we're sitting there and, and I'm just like, how do you feel, man? And he's like, dude, my back hurts. And I'm just like, you can't say that. Come on, dude. He's like, no, dude, my back actually hurts. I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> the first thing that I talk to Ortiz, the first thing he says is that his back hurts. What a player. That's my story, I suppose. Well, Kappa. 
All right, jumping back into the game, it looks like here. Two minute pause, real quick. We have some issues. I, I don't speak Russian, sadly, so. We've got something going on here. Two minutes. G, we're going to go finally. It looks like PGG got back to his computer in time. We are going to get back into fighting shape here. Hopefully, you enjoyed my story. Hopefully, it wasn't the worst story. And then I found $5 at the end, so I guess that makes the story better, I suppose. Since I want to roll and pause the game, and now they, they look to kind of just secure their advantage here. And this room for this luck right now. Roshan still down for a while. I mean, Age is just, just went away. He'll pick up his eagle song. Oh, dear lord. This luck with an eagle song is disgusting. He'll try to get to that butterfly eventually, I imagine. If that's what he's going to go for. I mean, let's be honest, he's not going for a shotgun. He's going to run right into Judo. He's going to think about going here. He's got maybe enough damage. Lasso, he's got he's to gotta focus that. that that's going to be an important problem. Oh, just getting away. They have a sentry ward here. Slark knows it's around. He'll kill it real quick with the gem of true sight. Pounce away and get out of any trouble. That sentry ward might have saved Judah's life. Four staff is now up for the bat rider, so he's got a bit of mobility. He's pretty he's pretty speedy. I mean, he's got those boots to travel, so he he does have everything online right now. The question is, is that going to be enough? Inquisitor up in the top lane, continuing to see us away. 1,200, 1,300 gold in the bank for him right now. and He's got a Basher, but he's been maybe like the lowest impact life stealer I've ever seen in the game. And, and that's not really a fault of his. Oh, coming through. Hex is up. Nubik was waiting for this. Judo getting caught out. Serpent Wards as well. Boats coming through. Four step up into the high ground right now. Song of the Siren is going to fly. PGG still alive. He's got that Daedalus. He's going to Shadow Blade away. Ice Blast flying through. It is going to hit. No, not the Bat Rider. Judo's going to get away. Lark. <laughs> Show me he's farming away. Butterfly now done for the Slark player. Roche respawning in 40 seconds. Very early Roche right now. So, another Aegis, and maybe they could push into the high ground. There's still this 2 2 tower left up at the top lane. They could try to go for that, but. EE -E trying to farm up right now with those Plague Wards. It's still getting very close. Let's say Tron. God, why did I say that? I'm, I'm, I'm an idiot. All right, Tron farming up right now with those Plague Wards. Trying to get close to that uh, Aghanim Scepter. And he's getting close there. He's about 200, 300 gold away from that. So he's only got three deaths to his name right now, which is not too bad for Venom Answer. So you're kind of used to kind of just getting absolutely destroyed. Just throw all of your abilities up and then die, essentially. That's kind of the Venomancer's life cycle. The story of the Venomancer. Well, today I jumped into a fight and got obliterated by Slark. He's got a butterfly and a Scotty at 20 min 29 minutes in. So they'll go for Roche. Nubik's Serpent Wards are up right now, I think. No, they're not. They're down for a couple seconds. It looks like, yeah, eight more seconds. I don't know if they need it. Android out of the pit right now. He's trying to get an Aghanim Scepter of his own. Sitting on the Ogre Club, sitting on the Point Booster as well. They're ready to fight here after the Sages, and they, they should be able to take this game. The Heart of Trask finally done now for the Nagasar, and she has her bots as well. But is that going to be enough? And I know I ask that question a lot. Roshan has but it just seems dying. a bit underwhelming. I mean, Chomi is... He has been focused on farming the past couple of minutes, but it seems like primarily his, his focus has been on fighting. And, and I think that's a mistake. Especially in this game. They know they have that late game advantage. They can definitely take it. They've got a lot of things to fall back on, including the Naga Siren, but it seems they're focused kind of on staying together. They'll set as four top right now. Slark's going to roam up there. He passed right by an Observer Ward, so they kind of know they're getting pincer down here. X Marks is going to go. PGG looking for that Torn. He's going to fly up. Show me in trouble. Daedalus going to fly through. Hex is up. Shackles might go. Surf for more trap. Show me. Does he have the Naga Siren song? I'm not sure. Ice Blast is going to fly through. It doesn't matter anyways. Blink away from Judo. Slark pouncing forward. Not going to be able to grab that kill. Flame Break pushing him back. Still might go. The right click. Blast it all up on Slark. He has the Aegis. There's the poison of Inquisitor trying to fight this. Bash is up. Dark Pack going through. Stampede. He is still alive. He's looking for more. Now back again off. The Shadow Dance did go through. PGG looking to fight here. Nice disruption to save the life of Tron. But oh no. He's cold feeded. The right click. Slark wants to pounce. Dark Pack going through. Not enough. Can't blink forward. Can't pounce forward. 
can't pounce Radiant's forward either. Now looking for this tier 2 tower, and it looks like the last starter tower will fall. 25 seconds for Chomi to be up. He's got no buyback. No way in hell does he have that. Looking at the buyback chart right now. Only a couple on the rating team. In fact, only Inquisitor has it. PGG about to fall. No! What are you doing, PGG? The rum, I think. And Demonic Purge and Shadow Poison. He's down for 62 seconds. Now they have to back off. They can't push high ground without him. We'll try to force maybe the issue here in mid lane and just try to push this in. Screen's getting low. He's got his mech up in 8 seconds, but... TP coming through from Xiaomi, Boots of Travel, blink away, nicely play from screen just to make sure he's out of any sort of trouble. Ward's taken down. Everyone wants to fight right now. Song of the Siren. Slark can get out. He has the Aegis as well, but Android is, is getting... He's dead. Flame Break, Venomous Scale, Dark Pack, Stampede. Android trying to run away, but... That is one dead Ancient Apparition. So two down right now for the retry. Slark with Invis. Going to look for a pick off of his own. He's got Skull Basher up and ready to go. Oh my god, this Shadow Demon. Oh, nice blink away. Just in time, but doesn't matter. He'll fall through. Godlike for the Slark right now. Goodness. Screen with a thousand gold in the bank. Sitting at the Ancient Sack, just stacking this up a bit. Uh, back up, dude. You're getting low. Oh, you have a mech. Okay. You gotta be careful. Yeah, and now he's gonna blink away. So, PGG's back alive. His next item, not sure what it's gonna be, but he's got 3,700 gold in the bank. Just go for a Battle Fury, dude. Just pick up a Battle Fury. You know he wants to. He's going to the secret shop here. Might be. What is he gonna buy? What's it gonna be? It's gonna be a Reaver, so he's gonna go for Heart of Trask right now. So, he's gonna be a bit tankier. He's not gonna have to worry. Skype having some issues, it looks like, for the retry right now. And so this 33-minute long game is starting to become 40, 50, even 60 minutes in length. I want to remind you guys, this is not the last game of Insane vs. Power Rangers coming up shortly hereafter. Power Rangers sitting at 4 and 5 right now. And Insane are still looking for their first victory, and, and they have a chance here, but they are down 5,000 gold, 15,000 experience. So they've got a bit of a well to climb out of here. Unpausing screen says G. And we're going to go once again. Venomancer. His Agatham Scepter is done. We talked about that before, obviously. Chomi with his BOTs is trying to push out that bottom lane. Getting close to another item. Yasha can come up soon if he wants to go for that Mantis style. The Fusible Blade is obviously available. All the meanwhile, Judo's kind of taking his, his camp, so Chomi maybe he's not too happy about that. Nubix getting chased down by an illusion rune. Dyer's bottom tower Hex will is take under care attack. of it though, so nice play. He does have the Ghost Scepter, but that's not going to save him from the Radiance Burn. Slark, Dark Pacting that top lane, trying to push this in. Everybody grouping up mid for the retry right now, and they should fight soon. They still have the Sages. It's it's going to be a bit before it goes away. Nubix is not there. He doesn't have a TP either, so he can't really get to that tier 2 tower. He can walk, obviously. There's double damage rune down in that bottom rune spot. That might be important. Um, I think they took down a uh, Observer Ward up there on the high ground. I'm not sure, though. They still have the gem for the Slark here, so he's got detection. He knows what's going on. The rest of Insane are stuck in their base right now, so no surprise there. Lifestealer is getting close to an Abyssal. In fact, he's got, Double he's got enough money for it now. Nice. Oh, get up onto that high ground. No, the Flame Break. Oh, no. It doesn't really matter. Pounce away from the Slark just to avoid any sort of certain death there. Nubik now coming through. His Serpent Wards are up. They're level 2. They're ready to fight, it looks like. PG's got to push this in. Do a lot of damage. Judo getting four step down on a low ground. I'm not sure why he did that. He's got a Ghost Scepter as well, so let's be careful. The Plague Ward's doing a bit of work here. Not going to hit up with that cleave damage, so that's unfortunate. But everybody's ready to fight right now. They're, they're going to wait for a Creep Wave and maybe go. They have that DD rune, they've got Aegis, they've got to try to force something. This is the last. Well, there's no outer towers left up, so tier 3 towers might be what they're focused right now, you know? The illusion did so much work to this creep wave. Dark Pact is going to come through. They need another creep wave to come right now. Naga Siren, the wards are doing work. Slark's just going to run up to the high ground. Blank Lasso, PGG in trouble. Serpent wards are up. PGG might fall. There's the stomp. The stampede coming through. Disruption flying as well. PGG about to fall. The boat is up. Maybe not the best fight for them. The Poison Nova coming through. Tron going down slowly. The Naga Siren, Song of the Siren is going to go. Slark has his puns to get out of there. The Serpent Wards doing work on the tier 3 tower. They're going to take it and get back. Ratings burn. 
Dark Pack going as well. They have the Aegis, mind you. Looks like that tier, tier 3 is going to fall. Nice deny Radiant's coming through. Slark's still alive, denied. but just barely. They lose PGG, but they get the Tier 3 tower in the end. Blink forward. No last one coming up for Judo. Four step forward as well. Looking for somebody. Slark might be his target, but they've got Pounce. Now they'll back away. So they get a Tier 3. No racks, but not the best engagement for the retry. Slark just running in. They use Stampede, but PGG getting caught out and getting lassoed up. So that's going to be a potential problem there, because they know if they can get him down before he hits up a, a huge Daedalus crit, they'll be in an okay position. However, if he gets one off, they'll probably win the team fight 99% of the time. So PGG down for 15 seconds now. And insane they're still alive here, but... They're hanging on by a thread. Diffusal Blade level 1 now up for the Naga Siren. So 1, 2, 3, 4 items here. The Killa and the Poor Man's Shield will get sold eventually. Slark way out of position right now, getting caught out. His Aegis is gone. He's going to use his Shadow Dance right now. The AoE damage is huge. Pounce up to the high ground. Not going to make it, but Shadow Dance giving him that vision. The Stampede as well. Now getting caught out. Judo going through with the Blink Dagger. He's about to fall and will. That's a godlike streak going to Tron for 1,282 gold. He was pretty much at nothing at that last point, but now he's sitting on an extra 1,000 gold. They get the kill, and even more so the experience. Uh, and Slark going down level 23. He had no ages. It just wore off there. He had his bash up in the inventory. Not the best. A little bit of an engagement for a Slark, but he's down for 60 seconds now still. And he'll be down for a while. This gives a lot of room to Insane. They have Chomi farming away. 1,600 gold in the bank. Mantis style may be his next item. Diesel 2 after that. Butterfly as well. So those are going to be his probably last three items to pick up. Everybody's rotating through from the retro. They're going to go to the secret shop here. PGG picking up his uh, Vitality Booster, selling up something else, and the TP scroll is going to come out for him right now. No heart just yet. MKB now done for the Lifestealer here as well. Just trying to lock down some heroes. They know there's a Butterfly on the Slark, so they have to try to get some true strike there, and the MKB will provide that as well. Net worth chart shows that in the lead is still the Slark. Only by 1,000, though. Show me he's getting close. Lasso coming through on screen. In trouble. He's got Stampede. He's going to use it. Blink forward. Nubik looking to lock somebody down. Fight may happen right around Roche Pit here. Nubik getting Flame Break. TP coming through the BKB as well from Nubik. Just to avoid the Flame Break, he'll get out of there in time. Chilmy running through right now at PGG. TP's away from everyone. PGG backing off. No Shadow Blade for another 10 seconds here. They're going to back off now. Still no Roshan. It's up in about 20 seconds or so. Another very, very short Roche timer coming out. For both sides here. Tron sitting right around. He has the Plague Ward in, so they'll know when this is up. They do have their Slark up and ready to go now. He just gets back to spawning. He's down to the bottom lane already, pushing in this lane a little bit. Looking for that illusion. He's going to bring it down real quick. The Radiance Burn doing a lot of work there. Roshan up now. Chomi pushing this out real quick as well. The tier 2 tower taking a lot of damage. Look at this creep wave coming through. PGG will take this down real quick. His heart is now done. It's going to be tough to bring him down at this point, even with the lasso. It would be nicer if he had a BKB, but Heart of Trask will work just as well. Slark going to back off now. He'll Dark Pack down there. Push out this creep wave a bit more. All the meanwhile, Inquisitor sitting on that MKB, sitting in this and why, but that may be not enough. And I thought he was going to go for the Abyssal Blade, but the True Strike is a bit better. Diffusal 2 now done for the Naga Siren, plus 2,500 gold in the bank. TR, the retry, they're trying to zone, they're trying to posture for Roche right now, and... These illusions are going to just cry. They're going to keep being annoying here. Riptide's going to come through, do some damage to a couple of these heroes, but they have to take them down very slowly, very methodically, in order to be able to go for Roche safely. And Song of the Siren is available, so it's level 3 as well, so 60 second cooldown, not that bad. Dark Pack coming through. The illusion scout things, scouts things out. They know it's up. Everybody posturing right around here. Song of the Siren coming through. Chomi trying to fight, but he misses up. They've got to back off now. Not a good song. Dyer's top tower is under Disruption attack. right now on the illusions again. And they're just being so annoying with these illusions. Smoke of Deceit, the retry. They want to bring the fight to insane right now. And they're going to do Dyer's just that. They're going to wrap around Slark. Going in the low ground, going in the river, Tron. Oh, uh, they catch him out. Screen can't blink forward. Stampede is ready. There it goes. Tron getting caught out. BKB as well. He'll fall. Slark getting that kill very easily. Now they've got to pick off, they can go for Roshan. 
Take down these Lucians real quick. Flame Break going through as well, but they look like they want to fight. This Inquisitor's going to run at him. Judo lasso's up at the Slark. He's in some trouble. Can they take him down? There's the boat coming through. Slark is still alive. Nice boat. The Serpent Wards are up. Double kill for the Slark. Going for Bignum. He's going to get a triple as well. Still chasing everyone down. Double kill for Inquisitor. Song of the Siren. Now I get Siren down for 64 seconds. Inquisitor getting caught out of position. Blink forward. Pounce further maybe from the Slark to try to grab this kill. Inquisitor juking around. Now he's going to try to fight. Rage bashes up. Now it's in trouble. Abyss the blade gonna fly inquisitor it is gonna go down ultra kill from the slark they're gonna back off they're gonna head to roche buy back coming in from the song of the siren naga siren going through as well they can't get anything done with it however so buyback is done if this naga dies again that'll be a huge huge pickup for the retry they can go for a tier three and a set of racks as well they're sitting around roshan however they're waiting for the slark to kind of come over and try to take this down and they will Gem of True Sight up again. Slark lost his last time he died. I don't know if it's in the well right now or if anyone has it from the Radiant team. In fact, Bignum actually picked that up. He survived somehow in that fight. I think he might have been the only person. I think he survived Roshan anyway. Has fallen to Slark the picks up the Aegis right now. He is getting to, I mean, he is getting very close to six slide at this point. Treads, the Blink Dagger. The Aegis, so get rid of the Aegis, get rid of the Treads, get rid of the Blink Dagger, and yeah. I guess so, maybe not so much getting close to 6-slotted, but... In terms of being able to fight, he certainly can. Naga Siren having to buy back means that next item's a bit further away. And this game is still very close and very up for grabs here, but... Insane are still in a position where they can't really do much. 2,500 gold lead right now for the retry. It's not as much as it used to be. The, the experience lead is just outstandingly going in favor of the retry. More pauses coming through, insane. They're getting set up. They don't need their ancient apparition because he has ice blast. They don't really need him in a fight. They're gonna push without him. It looks like they're gonna try to Dyer's go for the set of racks here. Last is ready to go, and that was the big issue in the last fight. Judo was able to lasso up in PGG and just take him down very quickly. Nubik might throw up the wards here. They're up in one second. He's got his BKB, mind you. There Dyer's they go. Tower has the range racks falling very, very quickly. Slar takes that Radiant so very fast. He'll take some damage from these illusions. He'll get to half health about. They're going to try to push this as quickly as possible. PGG with the cleave takes them down. So no mirror images for a couple seconds here. Melee Rex going through. Rage wasted there a bit. He still has some fest. Rage is only on cooldown for another 15 seconds. And the retry backing off now. Getting ready to go again. They're going to wait for the Slark to regen up with his Shadow Dance. They're going to make up as well. Or make aura at least. Mech's not being used. PGG being pushed back with that flame break. Slark looking for the melee racks. The first set of racks might go. Venomous scale, nice dark pack to get it off of him. BKB flying through. Hex up maybe. Blank stomp. Chomi getting shackled up. Nice disruption. Inquisitor going to town. Chomi in trouble. Bash up. He's in trouble. He's going to get a blighted as well. He's down for 86 seconds. Inquisitor survives. Tron getting chased down. The X marks is up on him. He's about to fall. He'll go down, but not before he takes down Nubik. Not that it matters. Android getting low as well. Now, double kill going for Tron as well. Slark trying to go to town. Inquisitor rages up there. The right click coming through. The bash is up. So much damage coming out from the Slark. He'll pick up another one. Screen gets a double kill. Everybody's down. By that coming through from the Life Stealer here. That Rider picks up his Mask of Madness, but it looks like this may be GG. The retry. Gonna shut down Insane's hopes once again for their first victory in Starlight Star Series. It's not over yet, but it's getting very close. PGG. And his team doing a real nice job of taking another set of racks. Metamancer will buy back. Slark looking to finish this all off. Big Num, there's the disruption coming through. Lasso's up on PGG, maybe in trouble. Taking a lot of damage, still alive. Shadow Blade going through. They have a gem up on Big Num. PGG getting brought down, bashed up as well. They'll take down the big tanky man. Aegis up on Slark going to town on Tron. Dark Pack, nice ghost up there coming up from the Venomancer. Pounce forward to get away, not on the high ground, however. Aegis is about to go. They can take down Slark again here. Oh, nice blink forward disruption. Missed it. In fact, it was on Inquisitor. Nice play coming out. The retries. Slark just pouncing and blinking forward, so just avoiding that next death. He wasted the Aegis there, obviously, but they take a set of racks. The second set of racks almost gone. The ranged racks taking some damage. Not really anything there, but... Insane are not done yet. One more bad fight, and they will be. No buyback from either Chomi or the Lifestealer here, I'd imagine. Yasha now done for the Naga Siren. She's buyback in 1 minute and 50 some odd seconds. Stampede, I think, was already used. Blink, Lasso, Nubik in trouble. Will fall. Nice pick there. He's down for 56 seconds. And Chomi's going to work on this tier 2 tower. 
Ancient Apparition getting chased down. Oh god, Android TP. No ensnares up and ready to go. Gonna use it. Not in time. He gets out somehow. Oh, that is thanking his lucky stars. Inquisitor picks up a double damage rune as well. They're gonna work on this tier 2 tower. They're pinging. Stark wants to try to defend. This is questionable though. Ice Blast flying through, hitting up on Chomi. He's got Song. Inquisitor might fall here. Slark's waiting to go. The rest of the team's here as well. They'll take the tower. They'll back off now. Blink away from the Slark. They, they have to let it go. They can't, they can't really fight under that tower, so... Forty-five minutes in, and Insane are still holding out for dear life right now. There's still a 15,000 gold lead for the retry. They have a 5,000, or excuse me, experience them. 5,000 gold lead. Bashes are coming through. Abyssal Blade is done. MKB as well. Knowing that there might be a butterfly at some point for the Naga Siren, that's not going to be anytime soon. Show me picking up a kill on Andrew. Fury earns death. Hmm. Well, that's the thing that happened. Haste! So buyback is up and ready to go for the Naga in about 24 seconds. There is that. But they've lost a set of racks and it's going to be tough to defend, so... PGG is working on this bottom lane. It's one of the only lanes that doesn't have Mega Creeps in it, so... Or at least some sort of Mega Creep, anyway. All the while, they're trying to push out top. Inquisitor's here. Chomi's not too far behind. He's forming that ancient stack. He can get there a bit quickly with that haste rune. Roche is up in five minutes, so... Yeah. That's going to be one of the longer ones, I think. One of the longer Roche respawn times we've seen thus far. Top lane getting pressured, though, from uh, Insane. The retry, they're going to try to push into bottom, but Inquisitor and the rest of the team are here, so they're going to have to try to defend. They'll push Insane back, and I don't think Insane will take a fight here. I'd be very surprised to see them do that. They'll send the illusions to the high ground. There is a fortification. They're probably going to pop it at some point. There it goes. They're going to keep you back home, and realizing they're getting pushed in right now. Torrent's going to fly through. Inquisitor getting caught out. Stampede, Stomp, Inquisitor, in trouble, the right click, Rage, he is dead, they catch him out of position, Judo blinking away, four staffing as well, he'll get out in time, but no buyback right now for the life stealer for two minutes in, and now maybe this is the retry's opportunity, chasing after Chomi, Pounce does miss, Chomi, he has Song of the Siren, so, there it goes, TP away, Torrent not going to be in time, no way. One item that might avoid all of that annoyingness would be a BKB at this point, but still question to see whether they're going to go for it. Slark and the rest of the retry, they're going to go mid. They want to finish this off right now. Now that the life stealer's down, life stealer's down for about 60 seconds, they know they have a bit of an opportunity here. PGG all the meanwhile pushing up at that top lane, taking their creep wave as well with him along the ride. And that tier 3 tower and set of racks is gone. They're going to head top and maybe just run right into that range racks and try to go for something. They're going to head bottom. Blink, Stomp, Tron, Double Edge, right click. He is dead. Can't even get the Poison Nova off. Buyback not available for the Venomancer. He's down for 62 seconds. The Life Stealer down for 34. Chomi's Illusions, though. Doing some work. Dark Pack going through as well. Tier 3 tower still alive, but barely. Serpent Ward's coming through. Chomi taking a huge crit coming out. Song of the Siren's gonna fly through. X marks Torrent not hitting up there. The tier three tower is gonna fall. The Serpent Ward's still going to town. Melee Rack's getting focused down. 16 seconds for the Naga Siren, or excuse me, the Life Stealer to be up again. There's the boat going through the fortification as well. Melee Rack's maybe about to fall here. Screen's gotta back off. They're doing a nice job of pushing his back. Blink Lasso missing. Slark going to town. Abyssal Blade. Do they have enough damage? Show me. About to fall. He will. He's got buyback. He's gonna use it. TP coming through from the Life Stealer Inquisitor. Trying to go town, trying to go to the town and Slark here. He's gonna get lasted up as well. He's in trouble. He's gonna fall. Big pickup. He's down for 98 seconds. He has buyback, obviously, but this aggressive play coming out and insane. They're not dead yet. They said they're desperately trying to get something done here. They want a victory. They're gonna bring this game as long as possible until they can get the victory here, so. Show me pushing forward right now into the mid lane. Inquisitor alongside him. Judo's going to TP in on those bots. Roche is up in two minutes. Yeah, I mean, decently long Roche bon decently long Roche bonds respawn timer. I mean, ten minutes is pretty long. So I guess because you it's anywhere from eight to eleven. So Ice Vortex is up right now, just under this tier two tower. They might take this down. They don't want to have to have Slark buyback unless they absolutely need to. 
So they'll try to force the buyback Dyer's middle as they go for a tier 3 fallen. tower. PGG might be able to defend this on his own. He's got to be careful, though. Torrent's going to come through. They're going to back off. They're not even going to try to force the buyback just yet. Inquisitor's going to farm up a bit. He's got close to either an AC or Mjolnir. I'd imagine an AC. He's got his Hyperstone already, so just some armor and then obviously the recipe on top of the play beyond the chainmail. The recipe would be nice to have. Tron sitting on the Ghost Scepter and the Agadum Scepter, so some Scepters up for the Venomancer. Got, he pretty much got exploded in that last fight, so he died real quick. Nubik, it's doing all right. PGG, Heart of Tarrasque, the Daedalus, the Chrysalis. We're going for the second Daedalus now for PGG. 3,300 HP, Ancient Apparition getting caught way out of position. He's going to go Scepter, but he'll die to the Radiance Burn because of it. Screen's ready to fight. They have Stampede. They're going to fight in. Was there a blank stomp? Song of the Siren going through, though. Backing off. Nubik getting forward there with the Blink Dagger, but they're still trying to chase this down. Pounces up. It's going to miss. Still too far away. Disruption's going to fly through on Big Num. <sighs> Just buy some BKBs, I feel like would be so great. You might get focused down, yes, but I feel like they don't have enough damage anyway, so... Now they'll head over to Roche. It's still not respawned just yet. They looked in there. It's up in about mm, 10 or 15 seconds. You look at Chomi. They want to fight this. Slark going to go through. Looking for Inquisitor. Lasso's up. Slark's a little bit overextended here. He'll pounce away, realizing he's out of position. Blink four. BKB. Chomi getting caught out. Serpent War trap. Shackles as well. Nice disruption coming through. No song is up. Chomi getting caught out of position. Screen looking for a stomp. There's going to be the ship coming through. PGG getting caught out. He might fall. Chomi getting focused down. No, the Slark trying to do work. Mirror images. Chomi's going to fall. Buyback. Not available. He's down for 30 seconds. Venomancer grabs a kill. Ice Blast. Nice disruption. Pounds misses. Nubik getting caught out. Buyback from PGG. Judo going to town. Slark taking a lot of damage. Inquisitor trying to do work. Bashes up. He's dead. Might have to buy back here. PGG ready to try to fight this. He will buy back. Not a good fight coming out from the retry. Although they picked off Chomi, Inquisitor's starting to do work right now. And they're going to posture around Roche, I'd imagine. PGG maybe getting caught out of position. The Gem of True Side is up on the Pat Rider. They'll maybe head into the Roche pit real quick. Ice Vortex is going to spot this out. They know he's in there. Now there's a Veil of Discord on top of everything for Tron. So they're on the path back to getting into this game. And they're not too far behind. 2,500 gold. They've been that way for about 50 minutes. 10,000 experience lead. So actually, they've quelled the experience lead to about 5,000 in terms of just getting back into it. No buybacks from anybody from the retry. So if they lose the next fight, they probably lose the game. Even though they've had such a great, great, great game thus far. No boots up for the Slark right now. Even with Shadow Dancing. I mean, he's speedy, obviously, but... Without the Shadow Dance, he's going to be kind of exceptionally slow in these fights. The last set of racks down bottom, the top range racks as well, is still pretty open and ready to go. Slark's going to try to fight mid. They're going to try to end this now. And they know if they don't get this here, they probably lose this game. So they're going to head in. Nubik not with them. They know that he's not there. They're going to try to fight this. Slark's going to go to town in the melee racks. He still has the Sages. Disruption's going to fly through. Soul Kitchen's going to latch as well. Screen getting caught out. Stampede going through. Dark Pact looking for a stomp. Blade Mail is up. Judo getting caught out. He's dead. Screen in trouble coming through. Buyback coming in. Aegis down now for the Slark, taking a bit of damage. Judo ready to fight. There's the last one. PGG. Dark Pack coming through. Ice Blast flying. Chomi doing what he can. Slark's getting low, however. There's the Song of the Siren. They can't focus anybody down. They're all songed up, ready to fly. Blink out from the Slark. Radiance Burn doing work. Nubik getting caught out. PGG. He's got to use the cheese right now. Three down coming out from the retry. Insane are turning it around. Slark's about to fall as well. If they get this kill, I think they might win the game. Double kill coming out from Chobi. They've got to push down a lane right now. They get a team wipe. PGG down for 113. Slark down for 92. No buybacks on either of them. No buybacks for the entire Radiant, or excuse me, Dire team. They'll push down mid. They have to deal with these Mega Creeps. But they could try and take this tier 3 in a set of racks. They just, they have too much now. Chomi, even though he hasn't gotten an item since this Yasha, Inquisitor and him are doing so much work. Judo with the lasso as well. And Tron is going to town with his Veil, with his Aghanim Scepter on top of that. He didn't even use the Poison Nova in that fight. Just too much damage coming out from the Plague Wards. All the while, they'll have somebody defending top. That's going to be Judo. Making sure that doesn't get into that range racks. Because two sets of racks is going to be too much to deal with. Look how fast they push down this mid lane. Slark is up in 48 seconds. They can take a tier 3, a set of racks, and arguably a second. Disruption now coming through. Inquisitor. 
working on the tower. Fortification is going to fly. 14 seconds for screen to be up. That's going to be three heroes, so might be able to defend this without their two carries. It's going to be tough. They're focusing on the range of melee racks. A set of racks is about to go down. Insane are back in it. Just like that, they're going to go for a 2-3 down bottom. The illusion is going to do work in this sense. They might back off now. Paint, playing very passive Dota. They might even just go for the win here. Judo, Firefly up. The Mask of Madness working on these creeps. Chomi working on the Tier 3. Everyone's back alive. Sitting in the side here. Judo ready to lasso up the retry. They were so close to victory. So very close, but they couldn't get it done. It's not over yet. Chomi, Mirror Image is up right now. They're backing off. Two sets of racks about to fall. Screen's going to stampede through. Song of the Siren going in. They do blow up Judo real quick. They have to back now. The TPs are going to come through from Tron and Inquisitor. Is he going to make it out? Yes. Just barely. Chomi might get chased down. Probably not. Assault Kuras now done. Coming out for the Lifestealer. Oh, they, they even up everything in terms of the racks. They have the same amount of racks as missing here. The Tier 3 is the only difference. This Tier 3 standing and staying alive is the only difference. Because this one is gone. Gem just sitting there nicely. The Courier's going to bring that in. Manta Style now done for the Naga Siren. 3,000 gold in the bank. Next item, Butterfly. I think. 56 minutes in, we're not done yet. Next fight, probably going to signify a win or a loss here. Stampede coming through. Screen. Looking to fight. Tron. Oh, he got the veil off. He got the poison up as well. Look at how much damage Screen is tanking right now. Oh, goodness gracious. There's going to be a boat coming through just to use that ROM up and try to help out. Screen falling very low. He's going to TP away. He might survive. He's going to go down. Venomancer getting the kill on Screen in the long run. Taking so much damage. Nubik getting caught out. Shadow Poison disruption. Not in time. Tron chasing down PGG. Shadow Poison continue to go. He's got no Lothars for a couple seconds. He's going to get Demonic Purge right now. Trying to TP away. Flame Break PGG is going to fall down for 99 seconds. He's got buyback in 15 at least. Wow. So Slark working on right now, I mean, at this point, what is he really going to do? Compared to what the Nag Siren has, how farmed Insane is at this point. They're losing every single fight that they engage in, and it looks like Insane know this. They're going to work on maybe another Tier 3 here in a second. They're going to go straight down mid. There's nothing here really for them other than the Tier 4s. They can try to go for the jugular, but there is that buyback for Kunkka, so... The Radiant have all of their buyback. They can be Dyer's a bit more aggressive. I don't know if they really want to. Dyer's Slark's going to back bottom away. Chomi now coming in. Buyback from the Konka. Tier 3 is about to fall. A set of Rex as well. Taking a lot of damage from these illusions. The Manta style and mirror image going through. PGG coming through. Going to hit him up. Do some decent damage. Last is up on PGG right now. Stampede going through. He's getting low. He already bought back. He's going to fall very quickly. Slark getting brought down as well. He's done. Double kill immediately for Inquisitor. Going to town. And Snap is on Nubik. Inquisitor trying to go to town. Ghost Scepter's up. Shackles are going through. Getting brought low, but not enough. They'll bring down the... They'll bring down the Rasta, and that's going to be it. GG is called an insane pick up their first victory in Star Ladder Star Series Season 9. On the back of an Aga Siren, on the back of a Life Stealer, on the back of Tron, doing so much work in these team fights. They finally pick up a victory. The retry couldn't finish it up early enough, early enough here, so the retry will go down. And now they're tied up with Insane in terms of their record right now. So Insane, well played. They stayed with it. A 59-minute game, and they finally get a victory going for them. And they'll work on the Tier 3 instead of Rex as well. The well not going down just yet. Looks like PGG just kind of stepping away from his computer right now. And I probably do the same thing here. Naga Siren destroying a tower. Inquisitor disconnecting Dyer's from the game, but the Ancient tower. about to fall, and that's going to be it for the first game Dyer's that I've casted today. The second game is going to be coming up here in just a moment. 
Dyer's radiant victory. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it. Game number one, at least for me, is done. Insane versus the retry. What a game. Insane getting back into it. They get the victory. Just so much damage there at the end. Thanks for watching, guys. We're going to take a quick break. Once again, my name is Mod. I hope you guys enjoyed the cast. We'll be right back in just a couple of seconds here.